three, two, one. Dolls and donuts, dolls and donuts. We are two dolls, we like animals. As a bonus, we eat donuts. Hello, and welcome to the Dolls, dolls and donuts, donuts Podcast, Episode 8. Thanks so much for tuning in. This week and hopefully other months as well. Ashley, your sweater is so cute. I wish that everybody could see it. Oh, yeah. It was a gift from my sister-in-law. It said it reminds her of my Penny Lane, my little dog. It has little, little doggies chihuahuas. all over it. Little it's chihuahuas so on it. cute. I wish yeah. that everyone could see it. This is its debut, it. so you are lucky. That you're we should take it. a picture of you today and put it on our Instagram. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that. If anyone doesn't know, we have I, an Instagram and a Twitter account for yeah, this Yeah, which podcast. we never seem to mention, even though people find us on there. So I guess which is great. We don't put a lot, but we put enough that I think it would be worth you checking it out. Yeah, and I heard the chihuahuas are slimming, so I'm okay with taking a picture. Oh. Yeah. (laughs) You did look like you lost some weight today. I didn't realize it was the chihuahuas. (laughs) Uh, So what did you, you had something you wanted to talk about, about what today is. Oh, well, we're celebrating a lot this month in the May episode. It's Robin's birthday month. Yay, happy birthday to me. (laughs) And today is Empty the Tanks. So this is the fourth annual. I got my Empty the Tanks can bracelet you, on Can today. we have a Clueless Corner for a second? Oh boy, okay. Clueless Corner. Okay. What is Empty the Tanks? Because Robin doesn't know. Empty the Tanks is, I don't know if it's always on, falls on May 7th or always falls on the Saturday around May 7th, but it's, uh, for four years now, it's basically the day of protest. If you go to, like, the marine parks or anywhere that has captive um, um, sea mammals. So we and should be they, out protesting right now? Well, if you wanted to. It's probably over for the day by now. Um, and today is the fourth annual, so uh, it's... I was looking on Instagram and every, uh, people were out there protesting. All over the world, people were protesting today at the Aww. sea parks. So I'm glad I saw a bunch of people there today because I figured once the SeaWorld thing came out where they're going to stop the breeding and the shows that people would just be like, okay, the problem's solved. Oh, yeah. Let's go on to the next thing or whatever, but... No way. Animal activists are case. on full time. Oh, I'm glad. Because a lot of, I feel like a lot of... This particular issue, I feel like a lot of people... This is their first issue that they've been concerned about. That's not dog or cat related. That makes sense. Um, that's not the truth for all the people right. involved. But I feel like it is... It's one that people... It's kind of like it was a gateway issue. And now they feel like... Maybe, some people may feel like it's been solved now. And they'll just move on. But, you know, there's still Lolita at the Miami Sea Aquarium, which is a very sad state of affairs, and she's not going anywhere or getting anything better. Her Aww. situation doesn't get any better. So, and there's all the dolphins and the sea lions and stuff. So that all still has to be addressed. So I was happy to see that um, four years in, it's still going strong and people are still supporting it. I didn't even know that that was today or what it was, but I'm so glad that activists are out there being active on my behalf yeah. while I am lazy in my house. We're, we're doing our part right now. Okay. Like, okay. know about it. So next year, I had my day in activism, which I want to ask you how you feel about that. Um, today we have vegan cookbook author Cecilia Granada who's going to be joining us for the episode. Hi, thanks for having me here. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for coming. coming. So yeah. were you ever into activism at all when you were younger? Um, I was I was quite a lot into activism when I was in my teen years uh, since I became vegetarian. Um, when I was 15, yeah, I will say I was participating into a lot of demonstrations, a lot of sit-ins, I was, I was doing a lot of actions, um, too, um, I was supporting the Animal Liberation Front, even though I never, um, really took, you know, did any kind of, um, action in that, um, sense that extreme, personally, um, but, um, yeah, I will definitely say I was, um, into activism, and you know, I kind of like slow down with age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Totally. But um, yeah, I still, I still, um, I still have, I, you know, I still support people who, um, oh yeah, who do direct actions. I actually I have a lot of respects for all of that still, and I, I will give them, you know, money and support. Yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of average for most of the people I know. Like we were all pretty into activism when we were young, and then yeah, as we get older, thirty, and you're yeah. like, oh. Never so mind. we're like depending <laughs> on the younger generation to keep it going. So I feel us. like I'm going the opposite way. Yeah, really? You're yeah. becoming more of an activist? Well, I didn't become vegan. I became vegetarian like almost 10 years ago, but that doesn't mean you become an activist, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say that activism didn't start until I became vegan, really. Like I stood for things and I like donated money, but I never, like beyond that, it's actually like ramping up now. 
All right, we'll give I do you, everything we'll get, Let's give you 10 more years and see what happens. Oh, You're still well, a little youngin'. Yeah, no, I guess. <laughs> I'm the youngin of the podcast, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so the, why I wanted to bring that up, I just, yeah, I did want to say thank you to all the people that are out there and probably getting some backlash from police officers sometimes and uh, people going to the going into there and giving them a hard time so it's not it's not an easy thing it's not know? especially if you're someone like me that does not like confrontation uh that can't be easy so good job to everybody that's out there today thank you thank you thank yeah, you thank you so robin what's your plans for your birthday oh mm, um i don't really have any plans but i have a birthday wish okay can i ask for it yeah now? Okay. Who is it for? Who is it for? Who are you it's asking for? for our listeners. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> and I realize, listeners, that we haven't been together very long in our lives, and maybe you don't feel like our relationship is to the point yet where I deserve a birthday gift. Hey, I think they know more than we even like remember that we've told them. I know. I think we probably crossed a couple lines. You're on, like, so right. Like, telling them stuff about us. Especially have you the pilot. Had, have you had people coming up to you and like get, and being like, "Oh, I just listened to like three episodes, and I have all these comments on everything you said." And no, I'm like, I, don't I even want that to happen. That. Robin, last episode, I talked to you about something. You're like, did we talk about that? Like, two weeks ago. I know, it's awful. So I'm not too surprised that people come up to you and say, oh, this and that. And you're like, what? I know. What podcast are you talking about? I'm the worst. I have the worst memory ever. Okay, well, go ahead and ask for what you want. Let's okay. see if you get it. My birthday wish is that somebody will tell a friend about the podcast. Because I feel like if every listener tells one person, then more people will know about it. Okay, I can do that. I can tell someone about it for will you? you. Okay. Yeah. Will you tell I will. someone? <laughs> well, there you go. I will tell birthday. everyone I know. There you go. <laughs> Yay. Yes, you got your birthday wish. got five more listeners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, five more people. Nice. Okay, so that's my, that's my only birthday plans. I actually, I feel like us going to Vegan Beer Fest next month counts as my birthday plans also. Okay. Even though it's late. It's going to count for Matt's too. Okay. So we're just feeding bun- like two birds at one scone. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you going to Beer Fest? Do you ever go to these? Uh, when is it? Uh, there's two that are like back to back weekend, one back weekend, and then the next weekend. One is in LA and one is in Portland. Uh, oh, Portland, Portland's first on June 11th. Sounds right. The Saturday, that Saturday, and then the next Saturday is LA. Oh, I actually didn't know. Well, yeah. I'm not going this year because I'm going to Italy instead in uh, June. <laughs> Uh, nice. But I would. Yeah, I didn't even know about these things. Yeah, Portland is big on like vegan events and vegan. No, oh, yeah, we're actually going to talk vegan. about that later. Later mm-hmm. on in my, my news, <laughs> Portland's going to come up again. Yeah, so, but this is, they've done, I think this is the second Portland one, and this is, like, several in L.A., so it won't be the last. Okay. So you probably get another opportunity to go to them next year. Yeah. Hopefully for many years to come. There'll be plenty of opportunities to go. And we have them here, too, but it's not quite as fun. Did you go to the Oakland one? I didn't. No. And they did one in San Francisco recently. I haven't done, been to any of those that like the beer I don't drink right so I just go for the food okay. yeah yeah I, the food. <laughs> I mean I am not a beer drinker at all so I go for the food I will go for the food as well I, I might have like one beer but yeah I mostly will go for the food yeah but I'm curious definitely yeah as I said Robin and I are going to be at the Portland Vegan Beer Fest um in June so if you're planning to be there uh, get a hold of us on Instagram or Twitter or our personal accounts and let us know we would like to meet a lot of you we would love that. Alrighty, so we have a couple questions to ask Cecilia mm-hmm. because I'm super excited that I met you recently, even though we've been on Instagram, friends on Instagram for a while. And the reason that we finally met in person is because you were doing an event at Green Apple Books because you just wrote a cookbook. I did, yes. That was my first event um, advertising this book. Um, it was fun, yeah. And I did just come out with a, with a cookbook. Um, it was a long a long project. It took me like about 10 years, but I finally made it. <laughs> and it actually I, took a shape, like a physical shape. Yeah, people, we've, who else did we talk about? Oh, H- Hannah was mm-hmm. also like, oh God, like how crazy process it is making a cookbook. Because mm-hmm. she's like, it's just like insane. Like, I don't know, I guess the, cook, the cookbook is like so much more entailed than it. Well, and this was all made in Italian first. And in grams, so then I had to like translate everything in English and mostly convert everything from grams to cups, which was insane. Oh. And I actually didn't save the Italian translation, so now if I want to translate this in Italian, I'm gonna have to do the conversion again. <laughs> You're grams. kidding? Yes, oh, I'm my not. Goodness. But um, yeah, it took a long time, but yeah, I made it. So after I went to your book event and I posted something on Twitter, uh, 
People have been asking me, where do I get it? Where are you telling people to buy it? Um, yeah, you um, can find Mama Tried, my my um, first cookbook. Um, I guess, uh, well, online, definitely on the website of the publisher, uh, Microcosma Publishing. On Amazon, it is definitely available. And in a lot of bookstores um, across the USA, I'm not sure exactly what chains of bookstores have it. Uh, but I've seen it. I've seen it in some bookstores already um, in the in the East Bay. Is um, there a list on the publisher's website? There might be. I'm gonna check on this actually. Yeah, okay. this is uh, useful information. Okay. Um, if there is, maybe um, we can put the link in our show notes. Definitely. I know they are distributed by Legato, which is this yeah distributor from the in the East Bay, and they might have a list as well. I'll yeah I'll figure this out. Okay. Yeah. When we find that, I'll have it in the in the show notes. So, yeah, I had found it on Amazon and sent somebody a link on Twitter, and then they actually ended up finding it on some other website I had never even heard of, okay. which is, I think it was in England, so maybe like... Oh, yeah, yeah, because it is, I've, I'm getting a lot of people from Europe um, telling me that they bought my book, so I'm guessing, I'm guessing they did it online mm -hmm. through some websites, um, and it's actually, I'm trying to bring it to Europe to win... Uh, in a few bookstores all over, yeah, in England. Uh, I've told to someone in Italy, too, so oh, nice. it will be available. You should so. maybe try contacting VX. Oh, yeah. Vegan Cross, which is an all-vegan. Uh, they have two locations now, London and Bristol. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's an all-vegan yeah. store. Yeah, yeah, um, I follow them on Instagram. Yeah, um, their owner follows me on Instagram. We got along when I met him at the store, because um, I spent so much money, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that would be a good place, maybe, to contact them. Yeah, definitely. Is they it, carry a lot of stuff. Are they carrying it at Vegan Republic? They, I am, I am having a event this Friday, the mm -hmm. Friday the thirteenth, uh, at Vegan Republic, and I'll I'll bring copies the, of my book, and they'll have copies of my book for sale. Definitely, Definitely. nice. Okay, cool. They have a little book section there. Yeah, for people who are local. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the other question that I got when I posted, so I took a picture of this and put it on Twitter, and someone asked me if this was you. It's um, it's in between me and Sophia Loren, actually, because I was looking for references of people, uh, like, I was searching for something like, lady eating spaghetti, uh, <laughs> and a lot of pictures of Sophia Loren and a, a lot of other vintage movies came up um, uh, of, yeah, ladies eating spaghetti, um, and then I also took a bunch of reference pictures of myself to fix the, you know, to fix the pose to, for, like, the details for the hands or, like, something like that, so it's... Um, yeah, and she has my hair. Well, not anymore because I don't have pink hair anymore. But that's uh, funny because if I had to get, if I had to name one lady of like, you would Google search images of lady eating spaghetti. I would say Sophia Loren would come up. So, in addition to the cover art, which no one can see this, but um, if you check out this book in person, the art is amazing. And it's the first thing Ashley commented on. Yeah. When she looked at the book, it's definitely the first thing that caught my eye when I looked at the book. And so I'm sure that you're getting this from everyone. Yeah, well, this is, in fact, in between a cookbook and an art book because it's all, it's fully illustrated, like, there is no pictures of the food or the process, and even the illustrations themselves are not descriptive of the of the recipes. They're yeah. very free uh, and very artsy um, because my idea originally was to um, combine these two things, you know, art and food in one thing. And so it was an art project originally, so I just kept on that line and um, I started doing all the illustrations, and then actually at some point, uh, quite towards the final stages, um, I work as a tattoo artist, and um, I realized how many, you know, broccoli and carrots tattoo I was getting to do at work, because positioning myself as a vegan tattoo artist, a lot of people were coming to me to get their animal rights piece, or even a cruelty-free tattoo that didn't involve any animal ingredients, you know, just like food. So I started to think that these two things, veganism and um, tattoos, might be uh, closer than one will think. And I decided to transform all the illustrations that I did in Tattoo Flash. So this is entirely, um, you know, this is a collection of Tattoo Flash um, themed with food. So all the, yeah, they are all about food. Um, and I chose for that reason to don't have pictures, but to only like showcase my artwork in it. I thought it was fun. It was a fun combination of things. So how many of the images that are in the cookbook have you actually tattooed on people? I've been asked this before. Actually, quite <laughs> a few. And, uh, and now that the book is out, people are coming to me to get, the, to get some that I never did. You know, so nice. They were like, oh, I saw these illustrations in your, in your book. I would love to. No, there's definitely some um, quite 
um, quite a few um, because as I said I had a lot of vegan clients but not only that even people who just get like you know pizza or um, some other things that are not necessarily uh, vegan but they are food related it's very common now you know to get like a cupcake tattoo or like you know yeah, uh, you know somebody that. that has one of those <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even know. Told you. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, or like piece of cake. It's actually very cute, you know, and it's like charming yeah. and it's fun and that's what tattoos are about. Um, so there is actually uh, one that um, I can think of. It's, um, it's a tiger eating cereals and it says, eat like you give a damn. And on the hat it says serial killer. And it was a, just a draw, a drawing that I did uh, many years ago. And I was at the Barcelona Tattoo Convention a few years ago. And this guy was going through my sketches through my available sketches and he saw that one so he ended up getting it on his entire stomach oh my god this gigantic uh, <laughs> face of a tiger um putting a spoonful of cereals in his mouth and the mouth like the the cereals were going straight into his belly button so it was pretty funny oh my <laughs> So he got it from someone else or from you? He got it from me. Okay, so it you did this at a tattoo convention. I actually did. Yeah, I started it at the next year. The next year at that same tattoo convention, because okay. the guy was like, "Oh yeah, let's do it. Two sessions. Two oh, really? long sessions, but oh, two sessions." Yeah, the guy like, you know, sat there. Oh well. Like oh, he was okay. tough. Yeah, yeah, I will say so. Like the stomach is not definitely not the easy spot. You know, at some point he was like, "Okay, I think I'm done." <laughs> so we got another <laughs> session, but still. Oh, I'm a wuss. I couldn't take any of that. <laughs> it's not that, that bad, bad unless you get like a tiger all over, all over your stomach. Well, that's what I wanted. Okay. So I'm not going to get that. I'm just not well, going to do anything. They divided in like 10, yeah. 10 sessions or something. I was going to do it. That's where I would go. So, I mean, I would definitely have to get that in 10 sessions. I'm too much of a wuss to <laughs> sit that long. Yeah. They would get like near. They'd like, you know, like clean the area and I'd be like, okay, <laughs> I'm good. See you. See you. <laughs> See you the next session, then clean the rest of my arm or whatever. <laughs> good day's work. Good job. Good job. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Wait, we're not convincing you. If you guys could see the look on Ashley's face right now. Oh my gosh. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't like needles. I don't like getting shots. I don't get my blood drawn. I don't, so... need, I don't like that either. And whenever I do, like the nurse, I'm like looking the other, you yeah, know, yeah. on the other side. Oh, and yeah, she's like, too. what are you talking about? You're like covered in tattoos. Yeah. Like, you, uh, like you're making this scene for you. Yeah, but it's different. I'm adding like a drawing on you. They are taking my blood from yeah. me. It's, like, it's really like a different. I'm sure it is. But my fear is if I decided, I decided to get one. Get halfway through and I'd freak out and I'd be able to finish it. Then I'd be freaking look like an idiot for the rest You'd of the day. You'd have half the tattoo. Yeah. But it doesn't half the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just a tail. Yeah. <laughs> like the Cheshire cat disappearing. <laughs> oh, that would be a good solution. Thank you. I'll use that. I meant to do that. Don't you get the meaning behind this tattoo? It wasn't that I just jumped out, jumped out of the chair screaming. <laughs> I was going to talk about this during the dollhouse section, but I made the recipe... That is polenta. Will you pronounce it for me? Because I don't know. It's this one. I wrote it down. <laughs> Dadi di polenta fritti con sugo di funghi e verza arrosto. Oh my god. I want you to do it now. No! <laughs> no, it's so good, but I could never, ever, ever do that. Uh, so, do you want your birthday wish? Do you want it or not? You gotta give them something in return, Robin. <laughs> so I made a little bit of changes. I used a different kind of mushroom. And I, I mixed kale in with the cabbage. And I didn't use the right kind of cabbage. I was supposed to use... Savoy cabbage. You know, I Savoy. haven't seen it. Savoy. Okay, that, oh. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah I haven't I've seen, seen it that. around very much. Uh, it's very common in Italy. I, I haven't seen it okay. that much. But. So I used a cone cabbage, which I felt like was kind of similar. Mm -hmm. um, but it not as, like, wrinkly. I want to say brain-like. Is the Savoy one the one yes. that looks like brains? The brainy one. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Brain one. <laughs> Give me some of that. <laughs> Grains and veins. <laughs> it looks like it. it does. <laughs> oh, it's yummy. green. Um, it just makes you smarter, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does actually, because it's rich in antioxidant. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! I didn't even know. You're like, yeah, I, I didn't was know definitely that. I was making, making a joke. <laughs> I was making it but looks it like brains. A joke. <laughs> um, so I made that recipe, and it's the only one I've made so far. So one of the things that you told me about when we talked about your book before was that you said that this was more like meals that people make at home versus maybe some of the more like fancy Italian food you would get at restaurants. 
Yes, well, um, first of all, I have to say that most of the Italian dishes that you get at restaurants here are not really Italian dishes. Yeah, like, pizza I really is Italian. No, pizza it is. Pizza it is. is. <laughs> not pizza with pineapple, <laughs> yeah. but the rest, okay. of, the rest of it. it I'm not, not like into it. pizza with pineapple Good. Either. I never got it either, no. but I did, I listened to a podcast called Stuff You Missed in History Class, and mm-hmm. they just did a podcast on the history of pizza. Oh. Like, pre-even Italy. Like, pre, like, when they started, we started as a civilization putting like stuff on top of bread yeah like that's like the big that's the whole concept yeah, really yeah, like, <laughs> yeah we started that before it came the you know quote-unquote pizza that we know um so you should check that out robin if you're interested what which what what podcast is that stuff you missed in history class oh that's everything i missed everything well it's everything that you don't <clears throat> like it won't be it's not stuff that you really covered <laughs> it's little little known history or not covered history they wouldn't be on the u.s history curriculum for sure it's very good I love how you identified me as the one who needs to check that out. Because well, you just know that I'm missing all this information in my seemed, brain. You seemed interested in pizza, so that's what made me think of it. <laughs> who isn't, really? Yeah. I know. Actually, one every once in a while, you'll come across somebody who's not a fan. And you're like, who Some, are Oh, you? yes, I do know someone. My uncle, my uncle Lou, who's from England, he says it tastes like vomit. Oh. He hates pizza. That's real. It tastes like vomit. Maybe say. he had a bad one. Maybe he vomited up pizza once. I've done know. that. And he just confused it. <laughs> and then like, like, what it actually ruins like. it for you. <laughs> I don't know, but he, he was the one for, I do know that, yeah, he was, as growing up as a kid, we always laughed about it, but he didn't like pizza. We always laughed about it. It was like the joke like, of you the funny family. foreign man. <laughs> <laughs> you talk funny and don't like pizza. <laughs> okay, so pizza's real Italian food. That's good to know. So what is not? Well, I've never seen uh, chicken parmigiana, never heard of it, um, or a lot of things, pasta bolognese, uh, I guess they will refer to the to the sauce, which is from that region, but it's not really a thing, or pasta al freddo, that's the, the most, like, that's the most, uh, you know. Those are uh, very, com- all that stuff that you're yeah. listening is very common here as yeah, but Italian quotes. I've, I've never, it's American. literally, American. you're not going to find it, like, yeah. if you ask for alfredo sauce in a restaurant in Italy, there, there is going to be a lot of hand gestures, like, asking, <laughs> asking you what you're talking about. I don't know what the other we thing. Do, we tend to do that. We tend to do that with in Italian culture, Mexican culture. I know the Irish culture. Um, we do we ruin here. it. <laughs> well, we just think this, that what we have or what we turn into just the culture here is, is not really uh, yeah. it's food. Well, you know, it's, really it traveled. About. It traveled. Yeah. Itself, you know, and then it and evolves it, into it, something that we think yeah. is still in the, the homeland of some kind that Okay, yeah. what about ravioli? Ravioli is Italian, hundred yes. percent Italian. Okay. Unless, unless you put something crazy I in did, it. I did. I had usually, ravioli in Italy. They're pretty simple. Yeah, I did have ravioli and lasagna in Italy, so I know they at least over there. Okay, good. <laughs> we got okay, those. That's great. Yes. <laughs> okay, it was so pre-vegan days though. Do so. you have a favorite recipe? You know, I think my favorite is a very simple one. It's the risotto giallo, the saffron risotto. And it's my favorite one just because I grew up with that because it's from the region where I'm from, Mm. where, yeah, where I'm partly from. Um, And it was the thing, the one thing that my grandma will make when I was going to visit her. So for me, it's always like, you know, like a good memory and like a good piece of art. I love that. So I will say that. And I love risotto. (laughs) When you you were saying that, I just had this funny... Uh, not really, um, but I do have this funny memory of my grandma Heider, my dad's mom, who at her house, and she was making, <laughs> she was making mashed potatoes, like put the mashed potato, like the the cooked potatoes in the pot or whatever, and smashing it with mm-hmm. a smasher. And I used to thought I was like, whoa, this is fancy because we ate mashed potatoes out of a box, oh, the flakes. That's so wild. I was like, whoa. I remember as a kid, like my mind was blown because she was actually like mashing potatoes and it wasn't flakes mixed with milk and a like, thing. That's how mashed like, potatoes. Like that's the are kind of. You're that like, oh, that's not... why they call them mashed potatoes. <laughs> They're mashed potatoes. <laughs> I get it now. Like they don't go, they, they don't grow out of the ground in a box of flakes. I can't believe it. That's not as good a story as what you just told, but <laughs> that's the kind of Ohio like tradition. Like, oh, it didn't come out of a box initially. That's like what food stories from Ohio are like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I Sad. mine is even worse. So Ooh. my grandma, the only, the one thing I remember her making when I was little is. She would make me a hot cocoa, which was probably made out of a packet that you oh, mix yeah. with water. I'm just guessing. That came out of a box. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then it starts in a box. <laughs> and then she would make us, she would take graham crackers and she would spread butter and make a little sandwich with graham cracker with butter Ew. in the middle. And we would dip it in hot chocolate <laughs> and eat it. <laughs> that is so gross. The butter is what makes it gross. Otherwise, yeah. it's all sweet, right? But then you have the butter. Yeah. 
It's I just mean, regular I think, butter. I think regular butter is sweet, right? I don't know. I just feel like... Like they call it sweet creamery butter. I mean, it is, it is, I guess. Ugh. I don't know why. That is it would be. Do they add sugar or is it no. just... Breast milk is naturally sweet. I'm sure it, I mean, it has sugar in it. Butter has sugar in it. Yeah, but I wouldn't like... I know, it's like, really like, we put some butter on top of my ice cream. Ooh. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not like well, a t- also because we don't want to be... I wouldn't put vegan butter on top of vegan ice no. cream either. No, Ew. I would not. But people put vegan butter or not vegan butter or a popcorn, which to me is absurd. Oh, yeah. But I guess it's, it's oh. not really good. Oh, you think it's absurd? Wait, how do you eat your popcorn? With nothing, just with popcorn. Just Wait, you just eat and... plain popcorn? Yeah. But the salt wouldn't stick. It would, a little bit. A not, little. Not, well, wait, when a... you get to the end of your bowl, how many little white pieces are at the bottom? I'll check next time. <laughs> Just text me yeah, a picture. Yeah, we are very well. <laughs> the majority of people in America would definitely have butter on there. Yeah, it was unknown or for me. Vegan or not. Moved here. Yeah, vegan or not. I is. just feel like if there was another way to get the salt to stick, I, don't I would care about be open salt. to other things. I'm not a huge popcorn fan, so I don't really care either way. Okay, we but have, I would have rather have the butter than the salt. We have to end the podcast. <laughs> Okay, you can stay. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, if I eat it, I, I'll eat it plain. I'll eat it plain. Like, I don't really care. It's not like crazy okay, about it. you guys are both insane. <laughs> and I don't like popcorn to begin with. Oh yeah. my <laughs> gosh. I'm How not... is this happening to me? Like, I could never have it again and I wouldn't ruin my life for sure. I'd just be like, oh, okay, whatever. Huh. Okay, I'm going to try to ignore the last two minutes of this conversation <laughs> so that I can get through the rest of the day and my life. Okay. Knowing what I know Do whatever now. you gotta do. Okay, don't judge us. <laughs> um, so, I have a question about the risotto. Mm-hmm. Is there a perfect rice that you're supposed to use for risotto? You are supposed to use arborio okay. rice, which is easily found. Yeah, I see I it. I find it I everywhere. never get it, but yeah. I see it. Does Carna- it come in a microwavable packet? <sighs> 90 seconds? I'm sure it does. Okay, nowadays. then I'm going to look into it. That's you have my a crock rice. pot now. I do. So you can make your, your <sighs> can't you make risotto in the crock pot? I have. Is it faster than 90 seconds? Then I'm not interested. I don't know. I doubt it's faster than 90 seconds. I'm trying to think of anything I can do in 90 seconds. I guess I can yeah. pee. Well, I can make rice in 90 seconds. Okay. Uh, Is that healthy for her? <laughs> I don't <laughs> I'd recommend 90 second rice to anyone. <laughs> well, if it's delicious, I'm it sure work. it's not. I don't eat it all the time, but I just don't have time for that business. All right. I'm already making whatever is going with the rice. I don't have time to make the rice too. You know, I gotta, I gotta. Can, can risotto be its own, its own meal? Yeah. Yes. One okay. Thing yes. Itself. But I don't make risotto. <laughs> if I'm having rice, it's with something else. If you want to nurture your crock pot romance, I suggest risotto be next on the list. We are taking the next step in our relationship. <gasps> I, I'm, make, I'm gonna try. Um, I'm making the curry again, but <laughs> this week I'm also going to try um, stuffed peppers in the crock pot. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's rice. Are they stuffed with rice? No, it's oh. quinoa, black beans, oh, and okay. other stuff. There's no rice in it, but um, so we're taking things slow. Okay. I approve of taking things slow, actually. Yeah. That's good. It's a good thing. So can we ask you one more question? Of course. So what was it like growing up vegan in Italy? Or vegetarian. So, or oh. vegetarian. Yeah. So I went vegetarian when I was 15 years old. That um, that would be a long time ago. Um, it was a and I went vegan about 14 years ago. So at the time in Italy, there was no concept whatsoever of what veganism was. Like there was not the concept of veganism. So in terms of alternatives, in terms of substitutions, even in terms of like people knowing what it was. I remember people asking me all the time if I was. If I, I had a disease, when I told them, oh, I'm vegan, they were like, oh, <laughs> Do you like, have you mean... for that? Or they will make up words, like, similar <laughs> to vegan, but they didn't really get the word vegan. They were like, vegan, or oh. something. I'm like, I'm, I'm not an alien. It's like, it's like a thing, you know. Uh, but there was no concept whatsoever. However, the Italian food is so rich in vegetables and all kinds of plant-based um, dairy baits that it's never been really an issue for me to eat in Italy. Because even when you go to the restaurants, you will just ask, you know, the, first of all, people will ma- in restaurants will make up things for you. Like you tell them oh, and you're, um, you're like, can you make, even if it's not on the menu, can you, yeah. can you make me pasta with broccoli? And they will make it. Or, you know, we will just keep the, the cheese part. And honestly, a lot of the recipes, like very traditional things that I can think of from many regions are entirely vegan. Um, mm. I can think of many. Farinata, um, ribollita from Tuscany, pane panelle from Sicilia. 
all, all, a lot of the recipes, very traditional and peculiar Italian recipes are actually vegan, but not a lot, a lot of people like notice it actually. They're just vegan by default. Now it's huge. Now veganism in Italy, it's huge. In Milan, they just opened something like 20 new restaurants in one year. It's wow. insane. Yeah. That's great. All, and you can find all kinds of cheese, um, like anything really at the supermarket. So it's definitely a different, different story now. But yeah, at the time there was no, like, well, there was vegan food, but people just didn't know. <laughs> when yeah. I told my ma- my grandma I was going vegan, she was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And then, you know, the next time I went to her house, she made like so many things. So she's like, oh, I didn't realize all of this was just okay for you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. It's definitely easier than being gluten-free, I feel like. I Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even go there. No, that would that That would be difficult, I feel like. Like, telling yeah. somebody they have to make everything gluten-free. Sometimes they feel... Uh, the, uh, sometimes they feel like I don't know. Because I'll see, like, gluten-free on everything, everywhere. And I'm like, well, can't you just put a freaking V on it? Like, how hard is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like right now... Maybe overall, that's true. I feel right now, in like the last couple of years, like, the gluten-free uh, like trend has been such a boom. And it's a marketing ploy as well. Oh, yeah, to yeah. buy it. So I feel like right now, it's easier, almost, to find gluten-free things. Yeah. At the moment, I don't think that's gonna last. I think when like the trend, mm-hmm. like people that aren't really alert don't really have elastic or whatever it's called. What, what's the disease? The, the actual intolerance called to the C, celiac celiac disease. Those people are always gonna have to deal with that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people just try to avoid it without mm-hmm. having an actual intolerance for it. Right. When that kind of dies away, I feel like we will have a. It will be easier vegan wise than gluten free. But sometimes I'm like. I don't care if it's gluten free. I just want to see if it's vegan. Well, the worst is when I ask them if they have something vegan, and, and he like, says, "Well, you're we gluten free." I'm like, I'm "Like, how is that helpful?" Great, but that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. <laughs> That's like me walking in, being like, uh, "Do you have milkshakes?" And they're like, "We have soda." In addition to people maybe wanting to follow you on social media to learn about your book, do you also take appointments for tattooing as well, or do you have a long waiting list? No, I wouldn't say I have a long waiting list. Um, in very busy times, I, I will say it gets to a month at the most. Um, and I manage I manage I manage my schedule so that I don't have so that I don't, I don't book too much further in advance because I just don't like it. I want to have the freedom of like changing my mind and like travel if I need to. Um, but um, yeah, um, I do take appointments for tattoos on the Sacred Rose website, which is the, yeah, it's where I work, Sacred Rose Tattoos in Berkeley, and um, I usually book my appointments through the, through, the, through the shop itself. Okay, great. And if people want to follow you on social media? I have a website, which is my name, ceciliagranata.com. They'll be in the show notes if you didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have Instagram, I have two Instagrams, and they they both have difficult names, actually I just changed one, one is easy, one is cecilia.granata, and the one about food is called pasticcio di ceci, which you might want to have Yeah, to you can something. send it to us, <laughs> and we can put it in there for them. Uh, but I'm, I'm working on changing that name, because I'm understanding it's really... It, it, it sounds says, beautiful, but I have no idea what you said. Yeah, it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> for me to keep that name, um, so I will provide an uh, easier solution for everyone. And I have a Facebook page called uh, La Ceci, L-A-C-E-C-I. Okay, cool. With my all my work, all my artwork, cool. and, and food work. And do you sell your artwork as well? I do. I do paintings and I do sell them. I, I sell them privately or through, you know, whenever I have a show in a gallery or in a museum um, or I have people commissioning me privately paintings. Nice. Do you have any shows coming up? I have one in Rome in uh, in June. Um, yeah, that's the only one that I can think of right now. Well, this is yeah. coming out June 1st, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you want to give us the date for that, we can I put will. that in the show yes. notes as well. Yes. Okay. I will love. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so now we're going to ask Ashley what's going on with the animals. That's me. Okay, so as always, we have three stories today, and I am going to keep the nasty stuff in the middle. So a Robin's <laughs> Oreo. The first thing I want to talk about is that Whole Foods Market is going to open um, 365 stores, um, which if any of you shop at Whole Foods, you know that 365 is it's all organic, right? 
all their 360 I don't, is organic? No, I don't know if they're all organic. I know it's their store brand, but I don't know if it was yeah, all organic It's or their not. store brand, and I think a lot of it is, but I think I've seen some 365 that okay. wasn't. Majority yeah. is, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's their store brand, so obviously it's a lot cheaper. So they're going to open 365 stores. Um, and I, I don't think it's going to be... I'm not sure if it's going to be all 365 stuff, like only 365 brand. I'm not sure. I hope so. That would be cool. You know what a good analogy is, too, for people who might not live near a Whole Foods? Safeway has their O version. Oh, well, lots of stores have their own, like Target brand. You what know, is the Target Simply brand? Balanced is one that oh, they, yeah, the Target has. Right. It has a lot of vegan, okay, so organic yeah. stuff or, you know, healthy, whatever stuff. Um, nice. So Whole Foods is working on this. Kind of, it's the, uh, kind of like Trader Joe's model. That's what they're going to go for. It's going to be smaller. It's going to be more affordable. Um yeah, so they're going to have, um, like, lower prices than Whole Foods, which, of course, that's a big problem. A lot of people have with Whole Foods that they think it's really expensive. They're going to have a loyalty program with personalized coupons. So you can, like, sign up. When you sign up, you can say you're vegan. So I'm assuming that will mean you won't get, um, like, coupons for, like, meat and dairy and milk. You'll get, like, the appropriate coupons for things that you want to buy. Um, and then uh, they're going to have a checkouts in, like, the middle of the store instead of just all at the front. Hmm. Like... It basically, like, you know, five items or less, ten items or less, that's not a new concept. We've had that for a long time in stores. But they're kind of, uh, they're going to have the regular stuff in the front, from what I understand. But in the middle of the store, they're going to have checkouts, too. They're kind of doing, like, as much as they can, they're kind of taking, like, the Apple thing where you can get checked out anywhere in the store. But they can't do that everywhere because you have all this stuff. But they're, like, moving it, moving checkouts throughout the store to kind of, like, disperse people and lines. And you don't think it's as crowded as it is. Okay, and um, another thing they're going to have, they're going to have a lot of seating like Whole Foods do. Like, so they're going to encourage you to eat, get your food there, eat it there. Um, and one that, the, go ahead. Sorry, does that mean they're going to have prepared food? Yeah, I think the, the, the middle checkout is going to be by the prepared food. So if you're going to get prepared food or you're just going to get dinner, you know, you can just pay right there and walk out. You don't have to, like, walk to the front of the store and wait in line with everybody else, um, even people that have a few items. So um, that'll be cool. So then you can, like, stay there and, and eat and hang out. And then the one in so well, Los Angeles, I'm assuming it's a Silver Lake location that's going to be opening on May 25th, uh, they're going to have the, a Buy Chloe there. Is that the first store? Is that their first one? Yeah, the first one's opening May 25th in Silver Lake. Nice. And that one's going to have a Buy Chloe, which will be cool because it's only in New York right now. Yeah. So it's going to be in there where? Yeah. It's I mean, it makes sense. In the 365. The Buy Chloe in New York is quite small. I think they can do it easily. So it would fit, a store it would fit in a... Yeah, because they setting. used to have the Cafe Gratitude used to be inside the Whole Foods in Cupertino. Um, oh, really? And that fit fine. I never knew so that. That's so. before my time. Okay, okay, anyway, yeah, there used to be a Cafe Gratitude in there. Okay, so they're not new to this idea then. And then the one in uh, Oregon is going to have Next Level Burger, which I've heard of. It's supposed to be really good in, in Portland, which we need to try, apparently. Oh, okay. They're going to have that in that, um, in that location. So those are the only two that they've said are going to have, like, a vegan... Those are both vegan places, by the way. So, like, there's actually going to be, like, an all-vegan restaurant in both of these locations. So, hopefully, they keep that going. Nice. So, right, as of now, they've leased 19 locations. So, there's going to be in states like California, Florida, Texas, Oregon, Washington, Georgia, Indiana, and three locations in Ohio. And it's going to be in Toledo, Akron, and Cincinnati, which blows my mind. I cannot believe they have it. they're going to have, like, locations in Indiana and in Ohio. It's so crucial. I don't think people understand. They live here anyway, how crucial that's going to be for people that are interested in veganism or struggling to be vegan, you know, or trying to stay vegan. If they're having the convenience really isn't there. Um, the Whole Foods itself just got into Ohio, really. You were just mentioning recently that Ohio is coming a long way with veganism. Yeah, and this is going to help a lot, like somewhere to shop. Um, I just wish they would have got one in the Cleveland area. So I think it's really going to help people like, in the Midwest, like areas like Ohio and Indiana that are wanting to become vegan or interested. Because I know I have family members that are vegetarian, um, and I have one that's very much wants to be vegan, but I think that this, something like this would really help people in that position. So I'm excited. I'm excited to go into one. You need to take a field trip to San Francisco when they open there. I'm into no it. date yet on when a San Francisco one. A San Francisco one is coming, but they haven't said when it's going to open. So field trip. Okay. Count me in. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now the fun story. <laughs> okay, now for a really nasty story. Um, the headline is betrayed. Vegans revolt against owners of famous L.A. vegan restaurants after meat-eating outed. So 
how I found about this, we went when we were in LA a couple weekends ago, um, I follow Moby, who most of you know is a big animal rights guy, vegan, and he opened Little Pine recently. Um, I saw on his Instagram that he said, I know I'm really disappointed about Be Love Farm and Graphic Gratitude deciding to kill animals. And I'm like, uh, what happened? Like, and he, he went on to like talk about it, but he didn't really describe the situation or like what was going on. So I was kind of like, something's happening. And like people were like commenting and like no one really knew what was happening. And it wasn't until like the next day that I found up the blog post that I'll explain about. Um, and then it wasn't until like days after that that it just blew up all over the internet. And then I was able to like get more of the complete story. So this is like from what I understand from reading several articles, two of which I'm referencing are going to be in the show notes, just like all the other stories. Um, so the... Egglehearts are owners or co-owners, I've seen both, of a farm called Be Love Farm, which is north of San Francisco. Uh, I think it's in Vacaville. Isn't that north of San Francisco? Yeah. Um, yeah, northeast. Okay, and they, it's a, been a vegetarian farm, not a vegan farm. What would you do with a vegan farm besides grow plants? But it's a <laughs> uh, vegetarian farm, and it's been that way for like over 40 years. So they do like milk and eggs, but they don't slaughter any animals there. Um, there's no meat or anything like that. So the people that own this farm also own um, Gracias Madre, um, which is a restaurant in L.A. and San Francisco, and then um, Cafe Gratitude, which is in up here in the Bay and in L.A. as well. So even though a lot of them have closed in the Bay Area, there's not that many left. I think there's just the one in Santa Cruz, actually. Um, but anyway, so they a year ago, they put up a post saying they were transitioning back to eating meat after 40 years, and that they were going to start, air quotes, harvesting their animals um, and then with that post they put up pictures of like like jars of beef beef broth and then they showed a picture of their uh, cooler or like their fridge fridge freezer full of wrapped meats yeah. so this went on unnoticed really because who reads that random farm blog nobody goes to that right so it just went unnoticed for about a year and I don't know who found this how it got all dredged up but it did so it came out that they are um, not only just, you know, change their diet, they're just transitioning back into meat, but they are slaughtering their animals now at this farm. And obviously vegans are very upset about this. So um, then the blog didn't really give them, it didn't give a reason, like, why they're, they've given some weird, like, a roundabout reasons, um, but they never really said, like, this is why we decided to make these decisions. But one of the quotes they said on their blog was, while I would clearly say that we are in transition and that the transition is happening deep within our beings, we know that it is a necessary and important part of our own growth, as well as the sustainability of our farm. Certainly a part of us wants to either deny the inevitability of death or simply not let ourselves get present to the reality of it for our animals as well as ourselves. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. They're such like, hippies. That is the most, that is very bizarre um, rationalization of death and murder. Like, so basically they're saying, but I understand that if, 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 if I'm not murdering someone in the prime of their life or taking the life of something that's not like on their deathbed, that I'm somehow pretending that death doesn't exist, oh, which is my totally nonsensical. It's, you know what I mean? It just yes. doesn't make sense. Like just if you let something live its life out, doesn't mean you're denying the inevitability of death. I don't, I don't get, I don't follow their train of the thought there. And I've also see, seen them use phrases and other quotes like cow's sacrifice and God's plan oh in gosh. reference to their decisions, which don't even get me started. Don't They're... even get me started on people using their belief in a deity to justify bad things, which is very common, unfortunately. They, this is not the first time they've been under fire. Right. Um, they had a lot of, like, there was, like, tips issue. Like, there was a ch tip pooling issue where a lot of employees were suing them, and that caused them to close down most of the Bay Area. Well, all of the Bay Area ones, and then there's just San, Santa, San, Santa Cruz. <laughs> blah, blah. Santa but I feel Cruz. like it's more like the cult thing that was pissing people oh, off yeah. the most. Yeah, they've, you know, they like came out with a book that was very oddly worded, and it's so much of this stuff, same kind of yeah. weird, bizarre explanations for their behavior. Yeah. So, so people are asking now, like, what's the difference between eating at Gracias Madre and Cafe Gratitude that is now owned by a non-vegan? Or any other restaurant that is owned by a non-vegan that maybe has vegan options. And, like, there's a huge difference to me because it's all about, like, the intent yes. and, like, the meaning behind it. Because the Cafe Gratitude and Gracias Maggi were given the impression they were built on ethical veganism. Mm -hmm. 
as a base, and that's mm-hmm. why they were there, and that's why people love to support them, really. And when it's and you know you're helping a a company or a restaurant like move in the right direction that you support, you know that you have the same right. values as. And I kind of see it the same way when you're eating at a restaurant that has vegan options that is not vegan or not owned by a vegan, but you're encouraging that company mm-hmm. or that restaurant by showing giving them support for thing that you believe in Mm -hmm. and you're moving them in the right direction or you're like showing them the right you know moving them along progressing you Mm -hmm. know what I mean making progress Mm -hmm. and this is kind of like the opposite it's like they 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 came to a place where they were an ethical restaurant and now they're going going the opposite way so it's just like for me it's just like the direction of progress yes you're technically you're you're doing the same action but the pro you know the progress and ethics are going the opposite way yeah. You know what I mean? So that's, well, to me, that's the difference. I can, like, kind of compare it in my mind, too. It would be way easier for me to be friends with somebody who wasn't vegan because they didn't, they weren't educated and they didn't know versus someone who used to be vegan and went back to being a carnivore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I can't relate to that. I can't relate to it's you knowing better, yeah. to yeah. you knowing and being educated and still making the wrong decision, the selfish decision. Yeah, or they're, they're, they're coming, they're learning as they go, and then they're making, may make decisions of the future that are beneficial and ethical. Right. The other, you're going the other way. You're just going, there's only one way to go, down. Yeah. Like, that, the decisions they're making. Yes. So that's the difference to me. Mm-hmm. It's not the same situation. It's not. Even if the act is technically the same. It's, yes. The meaning behind it is not the same. I agree. Um, and of course, the ninety nine percent of the headlines for this are talking about that they received death threats. <gasps> mm-hmm. And I'm not saying they're lying. I'm, <laughs> I'm really not. No, let me explain. <laughs> I'm not saying they're lying because you can take your trash out on the wrong day and you're going to get a death threat from something. There's always some crazy lurking in the shadows saying you're going to die. I'm going to kill you for doing X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. But they have not, from what I've read from other podcasts I've listened to that have covered this, they have never given. They've never shown. They've never given any proof of these death threats. They've just said they have. I'm sh- There's crazy people in every walk of life, every group, every m- mindset. Everybody has them. So I'm not pretending like it, there's no way it could happen. Well, I don't want to tell you guys this, but... It was you, wasn't it? I wrote like 10 of them. <laughs> I just use different usernames every time. I'm thinking also what may what they may be saying is maybe somebody that's angry said, you know what, you, you know, you'll be lucky if you don't suffer the same fate as the animals. Or something like that. That maybe misconstrued. They said, "Well, oh, oh, you've just you've just given me a death threat." Mm-hmm. I don't know for sure because they haven't provided what they are, so you don't know if someone said, oh, "I'm gonna kill, kill, I'm gonna kill you," or something like that. I don't. They haven't provided proof of these, so you don't know really what mm-hmm. how serious or just you know whatever. You don't know drama. People <laughs> love vegan drama. Yeah, I specifically <laughs> chose two articles, even though because the content the content was better, but that the titles didn't harp on that because that's not the that's not really the issue. It's not. That's not the point of the story. You know what I mean? So it's very disappointing. Um, It is. Cafe Gratitude was my, like, favorite restaurant for, like, two years when they first opened the Harrison location. Yeah, it's it's disappointing because people feel like, you know, they supported this place and though they had the same values. Yeah. And and they kind of feel like it was, like, snuck in there and it, it wasn't, like, didn't really, wasn't. They weren't up front as they should have been, even though mm-hmm. technically they did put it on their blog a year ago at the farm. But uh, it oh, so this has been upset. going on for a year. They put the blog post up a year ago, and nobody found it. So um, yeah, it's it's disappointing for sure. I don't know what's gonna happen. But I mean, people in LA have obviously a lot of stuff to choose from. Yeah, even up here, I mean, I have enough where I don't have to worry about going to those places again. Mm-hmm. You know, either one of them. So. Yeah. What That's do you think? A sad one. Yeah, I heard about uh, about this old story. Well, honestly, Cafe Gratitude was never one of my favorites just because it was just overpriced for mm-hmm. what they were offering. And even the the part of the names, uh, kind of like the hippie style, yeah, always bothered like me. The, and I uh, find it a little suspicious. I am enlightened. Yes, and I think the <laughs> kind of excuses they're giving. I mean, you know, people change, fine. I, mm-hmm. I don't want to get into this discussion whether why they became meat either or not. Um, they haven't said, so we don't know. Yeah, really we don't know. <laughs> but it's true what you say that they do own they do have responsibility to towards all the people that supported them through the years and um you know because i will do that too i i tend to prefer and i don't even like these vegans versus vegans mm-hmm. battle even yeah. though they're not vegans anymore but, <laughs> yeah they um, trust a lot now it's all fair game <laughs> exactly um 
but but I will prefer to give you know my support to places that actually deserve it and that are actually pursuing like some you know some ideals and some change in that in that direction. Yeah, move in the right move in the right direction yeah. at mm-hmm. least. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so that story. Okay, so now we have a good story. Yeah, this is actually kind of a fun one. I'm just basically going to go over PETA released the top 10 vegan friendly cities of 2016. Yes. And they're surprising. <gasps> okay, Are yeah. they? So number one, I'm sure you can guess what it is. Portland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is, like, I think they're always number one. Are they? Yeah, they're very, yeah. They're always win, like, best vegan city and, like, most I wonder what's friendly city. taken it, what is, yeah, what is the considerations? Is it, like, how many restaurants offer vegan options? Or is it how many vegan restaurants there are? Or how many vegans live there? I don't know. I think it's, I'm not sure what their, okay. you know, what the criteria? Yeah, the criteria is, but some of the cities on here, I'm like, there's no way they have vegan. A lot of vegan restaurants there, so it must be that a lot of places are starting to have vegan options. Right, it has to because be some that. of these places, I'm like, no way. Yeah. Like, I know that they don't have like like even two vegan restaurants in the city, probably. Mm-hmm. So of course, Portland, no huge surprise there. Number two is L.A. Okay. No big surprise there. Three in New York City. Okay. No surprise there. Number four is what? Detroit, Michigan. What? I, I don't know. that. I even looked because they have like a description on each one, like different places. And even their, their paragraph was even really tiny. And it was like, oh, well, this place and this place have like vegan options. I'm like, Detroit. I, I don't, I don't I think, I don't know why that, number four. Number four out of all these cities. I mean, I've never been there. I don't know. I've never been, I haven't been But it doesn't sound like. I've been to the airport, but no, I I know the area. I grew up close, like, two hours or two and a half, three hours from Detroit. I know the area, and it's not a vegan place at Mm. all. Weird. I mean, even if it's getting there, there's no way it's beating out some of these other places. That it's on number four, really, under New York City. I think they're, like, high or something. It's rigged. Yeah, that is crazy. (laughs) The election was rigged. Detroit? Okay. Well, if it's true, I'm happy for you people in Michigan, but... They deserve Jeez. it after that whole all the, water. All the thing. lead water. At least you have some <laughs> vegan food up there to wash down with the lead. Wash it all down with your lead water. Um, uh, and then five is Nashville, Tennessee, which is also a surprising huh, one. To that me. is very surprising. Yeah, but even much as I'm like, eh, I don't really buy some of these. I'm glad they're all like in the area that I grew up because that means that like mm-hmm. you know that area is starting to get more things enough for them to be noticed on this list right so it's good i just don't know if i buy it in the in the um in the in the air in the rankings i just don't buy it at this point you're not going to make your time. vacation plans based on this no. list is what you're saying no no i would <laughs> you, not so wait, you guys list. don't want to go to detroit with me weird maybe if you put, like detroit and nashville like at bottom maybe i would buy it more like nine and ten because they're like up come up and coming maybe mm-hmm. four and five that's ridiculous <laughs> i don't agree with that um <laughs> San Diego, uh, number six. Okay, yeah. There's some stuff I've been in San hearing Diego. about a lot of new stuff opening if, up. Yeah, there were new stuff. When I was there, like, I mean, there was stuff there, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a Portland. It wasn't even San Francisco. It wasn't New York. It wasn't mm-hmm. up there, but it was getting there, so that's okay. Seven is Honolulu, which I think should be way higher than seven. Really? Yeah. Way higher? Yeah. It should be over Detroit, maybe four or five. But maybe. you haven't even been to Detroit. You don't even know. Well, I. <laughs> I, I believe me. I grew up in the area. I know what Detroit's like. Okay, wait. Do you think Honolulu should be higher than San Diego? Definitely. There was a lot of great food in Honolulu. I feel like there wasn't a ton, though. I couldn't even get to everywhere. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, re- I really loved the food that food in Honolulu. There was so much eating food. Yeah. I really think Honolulu was good. Um, definitely, I mean, come on. Even if you're doing just pure numbers, it's beating out Detroit. There's no way that it couldn't. I don't know. I just find this looks kind of bizarre. I don't even know anyone who lives in Detroit that I could ask. And then, like I said, they came with little blurbs about each city. And, like, the big ones, of course, all had, like, you know, three paragraphs. I'm like, Detroit didn't even have that much stuff. It was basically saying that a lot of places are adding a vegan option. Oh, I see. But just because it's starting to become vegan friendly doesn't mean it's top ten. You know what I mean? So if it's 2016, are they saying in the past five months... These places have opened the most or offered the most new vegan options. I don't know because you places. think it like if you're in a top ten list of 2016, it would come out at the end of the year. I know. Um, or it would be the top ten cities of 2015 in the beginning of the year mm-hmm. for the year before, but they just came out like recently. 
So I'm not sure. I what like the, the time mid-year list. Is. I just need some explanation. Ugh, okay, yes. do we have any listeners who live in any of these cities who can just but send us your city? Yeah. yeah, I mean, Give leave us, us a comment. We want to know. <laughs> we need to know how true this is. So number eight is Austin, Texas, which I've never been yeah. to Austin, but I know yeah. I've heard good things about the vegan scene there. I would um, think that that would have rated higher. Actually. Yeah, I think it would have rated higher, too. Um, nine is Seattle, which I think would be higher than nine. I would have thought that would be higher, too. They have quite a bit there. I haven't been there in a while. When's the last time you went? Uh, two years ago. Oh, okay, that's more For Matt's recent birthday. Matt's birthday trip. Have you been to Seattle lately? I've, I have, yes. Yeah, they, they have good vegan food there. Yeah, they have those donuts. Would They're you have rated them mighty higher? Donuts. Oh, Mighty yeah. Yeah. I didn't go there. There's lots. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's there's a lots. Lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. It should have ranked higher. Number nine. Number nine. Oh, it's getting my blood pressure. <laughs> uh, and then 10 is Richmond, Virginia, which is another shock. But I don't that mind because it's 10. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, put them in actual order. Like, put Detroit at 10. And then, like, Richmond can be like nine or whatever. But, yeah. I don't know what Richmond's up to, but I guess it's good things. Hmm. I don't know either. So, that's it. I think if I was going to do. The list. See for, okay, so let's like let's make the issue our that list. San Can Francisco isn't list? even on the list. I know, no, or Oakland. Yeah, that, how is that? That's not. That doesn't make accurate. Sense. I don't think it's a good. They, they don't even make it at all. That's crazy. Is it because I mean, we can't combine them into one city? Because oh, I feel like if you one. can count LA as one city, then you should be counting Oakland and San Francisco as one or like city. Bay, yeah, San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, like as, I mean, <laughs> LA is like fifteen times the size of. <laughs> You know what I mean? The Bay Area, mm-hmm. so why not? Yeah. Um, yeah, if I was, yeah, if we were going to make the list, what would you put as number one? Hmm. That's hard. Number one, it's easier yeah, when you get like, to the middle. I mean, it's hard because I just got back from New York, so I have that like at the top of my I think mind. I have to agree with Portland. Yeah. On, well, based on my experience is more I've been so far. I haven't been to all these places. Yeah. But I definitely think. It makes sense that Portland would be number one. Yeah. And they have a lot of, they have, like, the vegan Although strip mall there. They have a lot of stuff. their vegan strip club mm-hmm. just closed, It right? is closed, yeah. And now it's, like, a homeless shelter or something, so. Is it a vegan homeless shelter? No, I don't think so. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not that lucky. Wait, they closed the vegan strip mall? Mm, the no. The strip club. They had a vegan oh, strip, the strip club. club. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember No, they that. still have, like, herbivore and all that, like, in that in the strip mall. Yeah, that's still there. So they have, more, they, other than the food, they have a, the community there is very strong. It is so, nice that they have that little vegan mall. Yeah. Do other places have that little vegan block thing? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Seen I would like to. I mean, of any either. I don't know. Yeah, my friend Brian is the owner of Scapegoat, Scapegoat Tattoo. Okay, know, yeah. I, yeah. I couldn't remember the name of it, but yeah. 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 So, that's, you know, more than just food, so. Yeah. It's a good place. I think I think I agree with number one. I'll leave LA and New York at two and three. That's fine. Detroit down to the bottom. <laughs> I wouldn't even put Detroit <laughs> on there. Thing. I'm sorry. So you would definitely but... move Honolulu up. I would move Honolulu up. I think it's more fair to be in the middle. Um, Austin needs to be going. Way Denver, up there. I think should. Denver should be, be on there. Maybe towards the bottom, but I think it there's a fair shake. I definitely think either San Francisco, Oakland, or the combination of the two needs to be on the list. Definitely. Yep. Um, something like that. But yeah, the Bay Area. Yeah, the Bay Area. Do so you, in some form. Do you form. think of anybody that's missing? Yeah. DC is supposed to be very good. Hmm. So mm-hmm. there's lots of places that I feel like aren't. I need to go to more cities. I don't know. How I want this is just making me feel like I don't leave the house enough. <laughs> get, get on a plane to Detroit right now. Oh, no. Not right right now. Now. Um, yeah. So that's the list. I think it, you know, they should have dreaded an up and coming one that this would have been more appropriate. Maybe some of these cities, but whatever. Up and coming. Just rename it. Let's, re- let's retweet that with a new title. It's like, Peter, I think you <laughs> meant up and coming. <laughs> <laughs> vegan friendly cities. All right, we're not even on there. We shouldn't even be endorsing this list. All right, do you want to hear what's going on at the dollhouse? Why show? <laughs> You're so Boston. Why show? I don't think I don't, that, know, I don't know, know if that's really or Boston or what it is. But I just pulled it out of there. Okay, so the only thing I've really made besides the polenta from the Mama Tried book was I made birds nests, which I had been practicing them before prom. Which, so that was a, quite a while ago. I love that you practice cook, like you practice to like start cooking something. Well, I mean, making vegan sausage from scratch is like not easy if you don't already work with seitan regularly. And I feel like I don't, like I don't make things with wheat gluten hardly at all. 
<laughs> oh, you're funny. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I made some bird's nests, which is basically like a cute little hash brown nest, and I made little sausage eggs that go inside. Uh, and the first time I made it, I made it during a brunch where all the promets were over, so everyone tasted it. And they liked it, but I was like, no, this needs to improve. So I finally got it up on the website, the improved version. So you can just... Not good enough. You, snatch, you just snatched it out of their... Like, oh, I'm so hungry. And you snatched it out of their hands. Not good enough. It's going in the trash. It's true. Every, every, every single time someone's like, oh, this is good. I'm like, lies. Lies. Don't lie to me. Um, so that's up on my Instagram and on my website. I'm doing a May photo challenge. Have you guys ever done a photo challenge before? For Instagram? Uh, I've seen them all over the place. But when you they never, were popular. Did you never want no. to try one? No, because I feel like I'm just posting stuff for the sake of it. It's like blue. All right, I got to go outside and take a picture of the sky today. And nobody's uh, going to care or want to see it. You know? I love challenges in every walk of life. I like challenges, but I don't like pointless challenges. <laughs> it's not pointless. <laughs> it's to make your Instagram better. For me, I feel like it was pointless. I'm okay. glad that you find a point in it. <laughs> Well, I also don't feel like I have to do every day. Like, today's was like well, that's something, the challenge. That, something that means a lot to you or something that's, like that. Robin, Skip that's that the challenge. Just to do it every day. <laughs> it is it's not a challenge if you just pick which days you want. Oh, yeah, no. I definitely pick which <laughs> days I want. Okay. I already skipped. Today will be my second time. I oh, it's yeah. totally the seven. Hey, don't say it like that. <laughs> be like, good job, Robin. Five out of seven. Good job. <laughs> that is what you need to say. Good job with that challenge, Robin. <laughs> Okay, that was not nice. So, have you ever done a photo challenge or wanted to? I haven't. I've seen I've seen some cute ones though. Uh, my friend did one where he will draw a pin up every day of the month last year in May. Actually, May I draw called he called it. It was cute. I might do one. Really? I have nothing against. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that is. If cool. you're doing a that's challenge of your own day, work right. and your your own stuff, it's not just like plumping blue, something that would make you cry. Something that, you know, a leaf. I mean, like, oh, God. <laughs> like, I'd rather have, go to the dentist than have to look at people post pictures of stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that is you different. Been that is very creative. <laughs> that is very creative, and it's a different spin on it. But. Yeah. I did one like that for, there's a thing, I don't know if, if they still do it or if you've gone to one in Oakland, and it's called Fun A Day. They do it at RPS. Mm -mm. Um, mm -hmm. And you know how so they do the first Friday thing, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So... In January, the first Friday is all the fun a day projects, or is it? So you must do it every day in December, and they do it in January, or you do it every day. I think you do it every day in January, and then it must be the first Friday of February. Mm -hmm. Everybody displays them, and so I did one that was cupcake themed, and I had to oh. make something cupcake themed every single day of the month. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. that no, that's quite better. Yes, the that's that harder just, though. Well, I, much it's more harder. interesting. Yeah. The ones you just find on Instagram and you just post them on, and that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, hey, oh, like, flower. Like, but it's your interpretation of flower. That can be a flower that you carved out of a strawberry. I hope flower is one of them comes. <laughs> Check my photo See, challenge. I inspired right now. you now. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> Um, okay, and then the only other thing that I have to discuss that is going on in my kitchen is that I tried the Hampton Creek Ranch dressing for my first time, and I am a fan. Hmm. Have you tried it? No. Have you tried it? No. Is ranch dressing a thing in Italy? It's not. Okay. It's, uh, the only dressing we do is extra virgin olive oil, salt, and vinegar. Uh, which is the best Yum. one? Yum. Yeah, that's good. That's the best one. So I have a friend who loves pizza and will only eat pizza dipped oh, in ranch dressing. one of those dressing. people. So I'm yeah. constantly trying to find a vegan ranch dressing that I can give her. I think I found it. <sighs> I feel like I could be into that, maybe. But I just always forget and just shove it in my face. So don't worry about any topping <laughs> or any, any extra things. I just There's nothing bad about that. Oh, okay. You just keep that I like I'm done. I'm keep like, that oh, maybe I should have some ranch dressing out. Oh, maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> when you eat the leftovers? When you eat your third piece, like, two hours later? Oh, you don't do that. You don't graze. No, I just eat, and then I don't eat. And yeah. then I eat later. And yeah. And I don't eat. Yeah, you're a grazer. I'm not. I'm a grazer. Yeah. I'll just, like, walk by and have a bite of that pizza and just keep walking the one, around. I, it's sacrilegious to, like, people that don't eat their crust, though. I can't get on board with that. Well, maybe it's that's like, what you can't get on board that we don't really like. Because we don't really like popcorn. I can't get on board with people that don't eat our crust. Yeah. Because that's, like, the, my best, the favorite it's part. It's the best? Oh. I love it. You wouldn't like the last pizza I made. There wasn't crust. I made the toppings go all the way to the edge. <laughs> How do you feel about that? 
She's giving me the death stare. You guys aren't seeing it, but... I don't have time to process it, so... <laughs> I'll issue a statement on Twitter later. <laughs> uh, alrighty. So, the, yeah, that's it for Dinner at the Dollhouse. Exciting. That's all I got. But you can check it out on vegandollhouse.com. And, Ashley, what if they want to find you on the internet? So, if you're interested in finding me, you can find my blog at theveganadventure.com, and that has all the social media links, um... Still no new new posts. <laughs> I'm I'm lagging. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get the Oahu one up soon before I forget about everything. It's so much better when I do it and it's fresh. You know what I mean in my mind. Yeah. But um, it's been like two for months. me that would be the day after only, yeah, and then after that I would forget everything. Like a, within like a couple like a mo- like a month even of me coming back from a trip. That's the best, but it's already been like two months, so. No one is I'm holding it against it. you because you are doing so good at getting the podcast out every night. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, hell or high water, it comes out in the first. I had a stomach <laughs> flu last weekend and it, I was in my, I'm on the couch like, ugh, barf, <laughs> and like working on the podcast and it was out on time. I know, that was impressive. <laughs> I was impressed. <laughs> so. What about you? You can find me at Vegan Dollhouse everywhere and we have great news that we have a new website for dolls and donuts which you can find at dollsanddonuts.com and you spell out and and you can find links to our itunes and our youtube and our twitter and our instagram on there and you can listen to the last few podcasts through there yeah. but it's actually better to listen through itunes because then if you rank us you can like give us five stars and if you do that then it like ranks higher so that's probably the most If you're not a podcast person and you don't even want to deal with iTunes, then I would say a website or YouTube mm-hmm. um, is also good. I mean, if, if that's the only way you can listen to it, then yeah. that's another option. But if, if you, you have time, yeah, if you have time to rate us on iTunes, that's the ideal situation. Yes, that's the ideal. But some people are like, what? iTunes? I don't know how to work it. I know. Or whatever. So you have other options, but we would like you to do it on iTunes. We would like you. And since it's please. my birthday, please, please, please. And don't forget to tell a friend. Yes, and remember your promise. If you see us at Tell Vegan Beer Fest, come say hi. Yes, get in touch with us if you're going to be there, because that, that's going to be a fun time. And that's it. So Thank you for listening. for listening. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Dolls and Dolls.